Hey, my name is Wes. In this video, I'm going to talk about digital to analog conversion. First, I'll give a simple definition of a digital to analog converter, and then give some example applications for when a digital to analog converter would be used. Finally, we'll do some simple examples to illustrate the math that's involved to actually use a digital to analog converter, as well as some architectures and how they're implemented. A digital to analog converter, or DAC, is a device that can output an analog voltage that is relative to some digital input value. As you can see in the diagram, we take some digital value in the digital domain, use the DAC to convert it to an analog signal to the analog domain. Another device known as an analog to digital converter, or ADC, does the opposite of a DAC. It converts signals from the analog domain to the digital domain. Most processing done by modern computing systems such as microcontrollers and FPGAs is done digitally. For certain applications, after data is processed in the digital domain, it needs to be sent back out to the analog domain. The most common use case is audio, but it's also used in video output applications as well. They're also used somewhat for signal generation applications such as function generators or direct digital synthesis or DDS modules. First, I'll explain how a DAC operates in terms of inputs and outputs, as if it's a black box model, and then I'll show an example of how it works internally. A DAC typically can take an in-bit digital input signal and convert 2 to the n unique analog output values. n is also considered the resolution of the DAC. This fixed set of analog output values a DAC can generate are usually between 0 volts and a supplied reference voltage commonly denoted as VREF. Now let's determine how to calculate the mapping between the digital input value and the analog output voltage. For an ideal DAC, we can define the following ratio to relate the digital input and the analog output. The ratio of the analog output denoted V out to the reference voltage is equal to the ratio of the digital input value to the maximum digital input value. We can use this ratio to derive what is called the transfer function, which gives us the analog output voltage as a function of the digital input. Conversely, we can solve for the digital input value required to output a certain voltage. To help familiarize these concepts, let's calculate the possible analog output voltages for an ideal 2-bit DAC. Assume the reference voltage is 5 volts. We can use the transfer function introduced in the previous slide to calculate each possible analog value the DAC can output. Let's start with the digital input value of 0. This one's trivial. If we plug it into the transfer function, we simply get 0 volts. Next, if we input a value of 1, we get 1.667 volts, and so on and so forth for values 2 and 3. The digital value 2 corresponds to 3.333 volts, and finally, the digital value 3 corresponds to 5 volts. Notice that the only possible discrete analog output values are in 1.667 volt intervals. This process of using the transfer function as a mapping between digital and analog domains is similar for an ideal DAC of any number of bits, in other words, a DAC of any resolution. Common resolutions for a DAC are 10-bit, 12-bit, 16-bit, etc. The higher the resolution, the finer the voltage increment between each digital input value. It's often helpful to know the smallest possible voltage increment a DAC can output. This is often denoted delta V. For an ideal DAC, this is equal to the reference voltage divided by the maximum digital value. As illustrated on the previous slide, for the 2-bit ideal DAC, the smallest voltage increment is 1.667 volts. For most applications, 1.667 volts is way too large, and thus higher resolution DACs are typically utilized. To show this, let's calculate delta V for a 12-bit ideal DAC. If it has a reference voltage of 5 volts, then the smallest voltage increment is 1.22 millivolts. This is much better than the 2-bit example. Now let's get into some of the specific DAC architectures that are implemented. There are several common ones, including the R2R network or ladder DAC, the binary weighted DAC, and the string DAC. Although there are, there are several different architectures that can be used, the simple R2R ladder architecture will be covered in this lecture because it's easier to understand without a lot of prior electronic circuits knowledge. To show how the R2R -R DAC may be implemented, let's look at an example. As shown in the circuit diagram, a network or ladder of resistors is configured in such a way that each input to the circuit 
has a binary weighted effect on the output voltage. Each digital input can be connected to either the reference voltage or ground, aka a 1 or a 0 respectively. Note that the op amp in this circuit is just being used as a voltage buffer and is not necessary for the theory of an R to R ladder to make sense. It just prevents the result from being affected if a resistive load is connected to the output of the DAC. I'd like to mention that the circuit analysis concepts required to calculate the output voltage are not the main takeaways from this lecture. The input-output relationship of the DAC itself are the most important things to understand. For those that are more interested in the circuit analysis side of things, you can use the superposition theorem and Thevenin equivalence to solve for the output voltage as a function of the digital inputs. As an example, Let's try to calculate the voltage output of a 3-bit R2R ladder DAC, assuming we have a 5-volt reference and we input a digital value of binary 100. In this case, because the least significant bit is 0 volts or ground, we have two 2R resistances that are in parallel, which result in a single R resistance. This resistance then combines in series with the R resistor above it, resulting in a 2R resistance. In this example, this process repeats until we get to the most significant bit input. We end up with a voltage divider between 5 volts, two equal resistances, and ground, which results in an output voltage of half of 5 volts or 2.5 volts. However, if we plug the binary value 100 into the transfer function we defined earlier, we get approximately 2.86 volts. The discrepancy that exists here is between an ideal DAC and a more realistic, albeit simple, hardware implementation of a DAC. It's actually not very straightforward for a common DAC architecture such as the R2R ladder we discussed to implement a perfectly ideal transfer function. Thus, in reality, we typically define the transfer function as follows. The main difference is that we divide by 2 to the n instead of 2 to the n minus 1. Let's try applying this new transfer function to the example from the previous slide. Instead of 2.86 volt, we actually get 2.5 volts, which matches the result we got from analyzing the circuit. All is not well, however, because since the maximum digital input value is 2 to the n minus 1, we can never actually get a voltage output that is equivalent to the reference voltage. As an example, if we want to calculate the maximum voltage we can output, we use 2 to the n minus 1 as the digital input to the transfer function. This gives us the voltage that is 7 eighths of the reference voltage. In the example of a 5 volt reference voltage, the maximum voltage we can output would be 4.375 volts. If necessary, modifications can be made to the architecture to compensate for this error. In practice, however, this is a non-issue because DACs utilized nowadays are much higher resolution than the 3-bit example we covered here. For DACs with higher resolutions, the difference between 2 to the n minus 1 and 2 to the n becomes very negligible. More formally, we can state that if the resolution is sufficiently large, then the output voltage can be calculated using either 2 to the n minus 1 or 2 to the n. To show you an example of exactly what I mean by this, Let's calculate the smallest voltage increment a 12-bit DAC can output using both 2 to the n minus 1 and 2 to the n for our calculations, assuming the reference voltage is 5 volts. When we use 2 to the n minus 1, as shown here, we get a delta V of 1.2210 millivolts, and when we use 2 to the n, we get a delta voltage of 1.2207 millivolts. This means that for this example, Using 2 to the n minus 1 gives a result that is approximately 0.02% higher than using 2 to the n. In real world applications, this amount of error is far less than error induced by environmental factors or even improper calibration. In conclusion, digital to analog converters are used in a wide variety of applications that require some form of analog output. They are the counterpart to analog to digital converters. In many applications, ADCs and DACs are used in conjunction to go back and forth between digital and analog domains. Because a lot of the computation nowadays is done digitally, it's important to be able to take in and output analog data whenever desired.